Okay, hi everybody. In this video, we're going to start with an introduction to the material in chapter 6, which deals with estimations. We're going to talk about a couple of methods that we can use to estimate parameters in a statistical model. Okay, so for example, let's say um, a biologist is studying black bears and they want to come up with a model for the distribution for the weights of newborn black bear cubs. How much does a, a newborn black bear weigh? Um, so they take a random sample of 10 cubs and they record the weights in ounces of each of those 10 cubs. And that's what's shown over here. And looking at this data, how can we come up with a model for the distribution of the weights of all newborn black bears? And so the first part of this process would be to come up with, with what's a model that would we could use to describe the data that, that we've observed here. And so if we look at this data, we've seen some, some uh, distributions already that you know most of the weights are kind of clustered in the middle, a little bit less than 10 ounces. And then as we move away, either greater than that or less than that, we can see that the values get more sparse as we move away. So the further we are from the center, the less and less likely we are to observe observations. Um, and we also see that the data looks somewhat symmetric. So for all of these observations, we might first just look at the data and say, well, what model would make sense to fit that data? In this case, um, I think it, we would have a pretty strong argument to say, well, we should use a normal distribution to model this data. Okay, here's a bunch of normal distributions that we can overlay on top of our data. And so once we pick a model based on say like the shape of the data, the next thing we would need to do is there are all kinds of different normal distributions. So which normal distribution fits that data best? Um, so you can think about this in some sense as like a curve fitting sort of problem. We have all of these different curves in red, blue, yellow, and green. And which of them seems to model the data that we have over here the best? Well, as, as far as normal distri distributions go, there's only two parameters that determine the uh, shape of a normal distribution. So we have... Um, parameter mu, which is going to tell us where's the center of the normal distribution. Um, so for example, um, it seems like the one in red and blue and in yellow, they all have the same center. Um, the graph in green has a center, which is like about eight. So we could probably rule out the green graph. And now we've got these three graphs to work with. But of course, we need more than one parameter to describe a normal distribution. Um, we also need to consider how spread out those values are. And so these three normal distributions in red and yellow and blue, they all have um, different spreads. And so looking at these, then we could probably um, start to think about which of these three distributions has a standard deviation which seems to match our data. And another way to state this is um, given that we've recorded these 10 values, which of the parameters mu and sigma are most likely? So which of these curves is most likely to fit the observed data? And so this is the process of what's called a maximum likelihood estimation. Um, and so this is the topic in the first section in chapter six. Um, so the, the process is going to be, we collect a sample of data. How can we first come up with a, a guess for what um, model describes our data? And then how can we find the parameters in that model that would be most likely to occur given our observed data? So let's just take a look at one more example informally to make sure we understand where we're heading with this. Okay, so in the previous example, we thought about a biologist that was um, collecting samples of um, cubs, black bear cubs. Um, so now we're all taking statistics. So let's imagine here, we're going to take our talents on the road um, to a casino. And so let's say a, strate a strategic gambler um, thinks that they have identified a slot machine which um, pays out more than, say, it should. So it pays out more money than the other slot machines. 
Um, so how can they come up with a way of gauging whether that is so? So they um, watch this machine seven, for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So for one week, they have 24 hours sur surveillance on this machine, and they observe that this machine paid out $10 million jackpots over that week. Um, so how can they figure out whether the machine is faulty or whether this is within reason? Well, we would need to know what the underlying distribution is for the amount of times a slot machine pays out this grand prize. So step one in this process would be, well, let's um, go ahead and collect some data. Okay, so they stake out four other slot machines in the casino. They, each person watches a slot machine, and over the course of the week, um, slot machine one only paid out one jackpot. Slot machine two paid out three jackpots. Um, excuse me, slot machine two paid out three jackpots. S slot machine three had four jackpots, and slot machine four had a total of eight jackpots. So does this um, slot machine that we observed that paid out 10 jackpots, does, does that seem about right? Um, okay, so we've got our data, and now what we'd want to consider is based on this data, what distribution is most likely to describe it. So we need to think about, well, what model would fit this data? Um, in the previous one, we were looking at a continuous random variable. How much does a, does a cub weigh? That's a continuous random variable. Here, we're counting how many times did the slot machine pay out a jackpot in the course of a week. So this is a discrete random variable because we're counting things. And so let's think about the different discrete random variables that we've looked at. Um, binomial distributions were probably the ones that we've seen most frequently. And so why wouldn't a binomial distribution work for this example? Um, binomial distributions work when we have a, a fixed number of trials. Um, and with this example, we're, we don't have a fixed number of trials. What we have is a fixed time period, one week, and what we're trying to observe is how many successes, how frequently did we observe this occurrence of paying out a jackpot over that fixed week. Um, so if you think back to the discrete random variables that we looked at, um, you might want to think to yourself, which one has the best chance of matching this data set? And that would be um, Poisson seems like a good match. Uh, and so if you remember, Poisson distributions, um, just to informally sketch this out, they tend to look like this. So they, they go, as you move to the right, the bars get smaller. And so what a Poisson distribution is used is um, if we know how, on average, how many times an event occurs in a fixed time period, then a Poisson distribution is useful. And so we denote um, lambda as the um, mean or the average number of occurrences in a fixed time period. And so it makes sense that this kind of bops down, down, and down. And maybe that our slot machines would follow this distribution because in order to pay out, um, you know, a slot machine first pays out one and then it's going to pay out two jackpots and three jackpots. So as the number of jackpots X goes up, it's going to get less and less likely that that slot machine paid out um, larger values of X. So the smaller that X is, the, the more likely um, that is to occur. So uh, a Poisson distribution might work here. And Poisson distribution, that has one parameter, which is lambda, which is the mean number of outcomes. And that... Um, PDF for a Poisson distribution would look like um, the PDF here is lambda to the x times e to the minus lambda all divided by x factorial. So that's the PDF for a Poisson distribution um, where lambda, again, is the only parameter in this model and lambda is representing, in this case, on average, how many times does a slot machine pay out the jackpot in the course of a week? And we don't know what lambda is. 
So that would be the next step in the process would be, well, given that we've observed four values, one, three, four, and eight, if we assume that uh, the underlying distribution is Poisson, well, how can we figure out the value of lambda, which would be most likely given that we observed this data set? Okay, well, to determine that, let's first kind of consider what is the probability, first of all, of even getting this data set. So what's the probability that um, x1 would equal 1 and x2 would equal, um, we got 3, and x3 is equal to 4, and x4 is equal to 8. Well, since these are independent events, this would be the same thing as saying what's the probability that x1 is 1 times the probability that x2 is 3 times the probability that uh, x3 is 4 times the probability that x4 is 8. Um, so we, again, assumed that each of these machines, each of these uh, um, ob observations was independent of the other. So we could just multiply each of those values. So how would I find the probability that x1 is equal to 1? Well, that's going to be what I get when I plug 1 into the PDF function. So this function over here is telling us what's the probability that x is equal to x. That random variable x is equal to x. Um, so... For this one, I would say, well, what's the probability that x is equal to 1? That's going to be lambda to the first power e to the minus lambda all over 1 factorial. Then I'm going to say lambda. The second observation I got was 3. So I'm going to get the probability that occurs would be lambda cubed e to the minus lambda all over 3 factorial and so on. And then we would say uh, lambda to the fourth, since our third observation was that x was equal to 4 over 4 factorial. And then um, our last observation, our fourth observation was 8. We observed, say, 8 jackpots over the course of the week. Okay, and so what we have here um, below is we have a formula for what is the probability of observing a sample that had x1 equal to 1, so on, x4 equal to 8, um, it, and we don't know what lambda is over here. So kind of the what we are given is the sample and what we don't know is the value of lambda. And so as we saw with the previous normal distribution, um, example, what I would want to do is then ask myself, well, um, which value of lambda is most likely to be true if this is our output? So let's kind of see how we can take this probability and answer the question, given this set of data, which value of lambda is most likely?